Hey guys, HTV here and welcome back to another video going over Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. In today's video we're going to be going over the second half of the gameplay that was showcased in the Nintendo Treehouse event that happened yesterday. We went over Mount Moon and Team Rocket in yesterday's video and then in today's video we're going to be going over Celadon City, uh, going over the department store, Erica's gym, the new move tutors, the new uh, nature person, everything like that and also the Meltan gameplay as well. So if you guys are excited for that please do drop a like down below, comment as well, subscribe if you're brand new because I do daily Pokemon content on this channel. With all of that out of the way though guys, let's get into the video and take a look at some more gameplay about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. So starting things off, one of the brand new things for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is that we actually have move tutors here, but not just ordinary move tutors, they're actually ones that teach your starter Pokemon uh, some unique moves that only they can learn. So obviously in the past we've had like Blast Burn and Hydro Cannon and stuff like that, the starter Pokemon can usually learn, but in these games, they're moves that only Pikachu and Eevee can learn if they're your starter Pokemon. So obviously Sizzly Slide and everything like that, you don't actually get that through level up, you actually get that from these move tutors and stuff. So obviously, you go up to him, he looks like a one of the circus people, he has a lollipop and a whip, I, I don't know why, two things that don't really mix, um, but I, I'm pretty sure they're in like every single Pokemon Center, I'm not too sure, but that's kind of where you'd expect them to be. Anyway, he goes and says, your Eevee looks very promising, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And it's nice when people notice, you know, my Eevee. It's good stuff. And then he goes on to say, uh, I'm pretty sure that Eevee, uh, what, what, I'm pretty, what are you pretty sure about? I'm pretty sure that Eevee can learn a marvelous move that I've developed. And then he goes on to say, uh, basically one of these. So obviously, Bouncy Bubble, Buzzy Buzz, Sizzly Slide is what we already know. But now we've got access to Glitzy Glow. <laughs> I'm baddie, baddie bad. Baddy bad. Yeah, I think. But something I do want to quickly note is that I did make a video going over this exact thing quite a while ago, going over the fact that Eevee's going to learn a move for every evolution because of the steel case and stuff like that. I made a video basically saying that Eevee was going to learn a move for every one of those types. And that's kind of becoming more true now. I'm pretty sure Glitzy Glow is going to be like psychic. And then Baddy bad, I'm pretty sure it's going to be dark. So we have water, electric, fire, psychic and dark i think it's kind of going in the the direction where the evolutions were released so obviously we got the first three kanto evolutions and we got the johto evolutions then you're going to get access to like an ice and a grass move because of glaceon and leafeon and then finally going to get access to sylveon's move as well um but yeah so their 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 names bad baddie bad baddie bad but basically that's how you get the unique moves and there's the same for pikachu as well with the whole splishy splash and floaty fall and stuff like that you get all of those from these move tutors as well so I'm not sure if they're going to be in every Pokemon Center or what. Uh, this is just the Pokemon Center in Celadon City, but uh, you could obviously, maybe in Pewty, you get access to like these three, and then in like Celadon, you get access to these two. I'm not too sure, but that's the thing. Um, so she goes and learns Sizzly Slide. Um, you can see the nature here and like that. It's just like a normal uh, level up move. You literally just get off a move and then you get the room for the new one. So that's that. Um, that's that dude. Very, very interesting. But then over here, we actually have a nature person i don't know what the actual name is but these nature people what they basically do is you have to pay them and then you basically get to tell them what nature you want pokemon in the wild to appear as for like uh i'm not sure how long it is probably like half an hour or something like that but basically you go down and you answer these questions it's like red yellow blue green or pink um you have to pay 10 grand which is quite a lot but basically you do this and then every pokemon in the wild will become that nature so she got lonely nature the person that was playing this so every pokemon for about half an hour that you find in the wild will be a lonely nature pokemon it's actually a really good idea and i am a big fan of it because there's no breeding in this game or anything like that so you can't use any everstones or destiny or something like that to get the natures and ivs and whatnot this is just kind of like a way around that to keep the competitive still somewhat viable. So instead of having to just randomly catch a bunch of different Pokemon that are going to have like bad natures and bad IVs. And blah, like say if I wanted a Growlithe and it got good IVs but had an awful nature, it's going to be really annoying and there'd be no way to change it. Luckily though, for this whole like chaining thing to get better IVs and things like that, um, you just talk to this person and then boom, um, it will make that nature a thing. So that's actually a really good idea for me. I am a big fan of that. Then they go into IVs and stuff, which is really cool because they actually have IV um, checkers now. You can actually like judge the IVs of your Pokemon. So 
um, you go onto this screen and then basically you go on the IV and it says it says about the stats so obviously in ultra ultra moon we kind of got this kind of thing but obviously as you can see with this vulpix has good okay 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 so obviously a special attack is its best iv nature uh it doesn't know how many points it has in iv obviously if it says like best it'll have a 31 um and then it kind of mixes and matches with the other vulpixes um but as you can see this one has fantastic best very good very good very good very good so best is obviously 31 i'm guessing fantastic must be like 28 to 30 or something like that and then very good um, so this obviously has amazing stats, as you can see. The IVs are really good for this Pokemon. I don't know how you get better IV Pokemon. I'm guessing you do it by chaining. Um, that's definitely something that might make sense. So obviously, as you know, uh, you can combo Pokemon in these games. You basically have to just catch the same Pokemon over and over again. And then you combo them, you get a combo bonus. You get shiny Pokemon being able to appear more. You get rarer Pokemon being able to appear more. But I think if you catch the same Pokemon over and over again, you keep comboing it, maybe you have like a really high chance of... Um, a better IV Pokemon appearing, which is obviously a really cool idea. So I'm really glad what they've done with the competitive here. Um, you can see the IVs. You don't have to go to an IV check or anything like that. You can see it all from the stats, just like you can in Pokemon Go. I love this nature person as well. I think it's a really good idea for the games. Um, so yeah, so if you ever want to go out and like kind of get a good Growlithe and evolve into an Arcanine for the competitive scene, literally just go to this person here. These are probably in every single Pokemon Center. Um, you go up to him, you talk to nature and stuff. She's like, oh yeah, which one you want? And then boom, I want like an adamant natured. Uh, and then you go out and try and find all the Growlithe. Obviously it's good as well because it's not random encounters. You literally just go out and then if you're comboing Growlithe, you literally just go up to the Growlithe and you will know if you're finding a Growlithe or not. So really cool idea. I don't think grinding for these is going to be as difficult as you may think because obviously you can just keep going those uh, Growlithe. Hopefully just keep comboing them, stuff like that. But I'm a big fan of that anyway. Next up, we have the department store. The department store actually looks incredible. I'm a big fan of this place. Um, the different items have the different um, outlines. So for like items like potions and stuff, you got like the blue outline with this kind of like image. Then for like Pokeballs, you have like a red outline uh, with the Pokeball symbol and stuff like that. Um, so obviously in the department store, as we all know, you could always uh, get like the stones here in Celadon. You can obviously buy just like loads of different stuff like that. And those like cosmetics and stuff as like the higher you go. This is like the trade, like the trading room, I think, um, which is a really cool uh, place because you, you have like all the different things about it. So we have like Pikachu and Eevee posters. Uh, we have Nintendo Switches in here. It's kind of funny because they're advertising the Switch in a Switch game. We've got a Pokemon Quest symbol here. We've got Pikachu and Eevee Pokemon Quest. Um, but yeah, we've just got Nintendo Switches, Eevee and Pikachu posters. Um, but look how nice the game looks. Like, people really are taking this for granted. Like, a lot of people aren't really excited about this at all, which is fair enough. But a lot of people are really overlooking how nice the graphics actually are. Like, the graphics with the posters um, in the Pokemon and stuff like... Um, I don't know if it's on this floor or not. Yeah, this floor. We actually have the items. Like, it's not just all rubbish behind, like, glass. All the items are actually... You can easily see, like, we've got uh, potions here. we got, uh, like, the, the proteins and stuff here. we got the repels here. Um, it, it looks really nice. We've got bottled water there as well, but it does just looks really really nice And I'm really glad with what they've done with the game uh, Anyway next up we obviously have the cosmetic section and this is where you buy all the different things for your Eevee and Pikachu So you can buy like little red bows green bows blue bows, whatever um, And this is where you basically obviously you can get different cosmetics from different places uh, As we know like at the very very start you get like the different clothes um, Straight away in Pallet Town like that woman gives you them but like this is just a big place you can buy like a bunch of stuff like you got glasses and stuff you got hats everything like that and then obviously you can just dress them up and stuff like that really easy to do um and then boom that's the elevator and then we have erica's gym uh which is i don't know just beautiful we still got this old guy looking in they're kind of like weirdo he, my man's been staring at that for like 20 years but erica's gym looks really nice obviously completely different to what we usually used to uh, as soon as you like what well, we'll just wait until they walk in so you walk in like this Look how nice it looks. It looks really nice. Got Erica right there. She can see it. She's like, yeah, you're coming up. I know you're going to battle me. And you're like, yeah, you know I am. But yeah, the, the game just looks really nice. Uh, the whole gym just looks really, really nice. So anyway, last up, we obviously have some Meltan gameplay. And this is just Poke Park. Um, as we all know, Poke Park is just a thing where you have to collect like 25 Pokemon. You can only do this kind of minigame if you have 25 of those Pokemon. So it's obviously 25 Meltan here. So they're just doing this Meltan minigame here. It actually looks really difficult. Like this woman actually has a lot of difficulty doing this. I don't know if it was pre-recorded or what, but the amount of Rhydons and Golems and stuff like popping up really making life difficult for her is kind of crazy. And then uh, last but not least, we actually have you catching Meltan. Meltan's actually um, being caught in this gameplay. So you walk up to him. If you catch Pokemon in Go Park, Pokemon's information will be changed for when it was in Pokemon Go. Is that okay? Yes. And then boom, you enter the battle with Meltan. 
and then boom, Meltan is here. He's like, how you doing, pal? Uh, Meltan has been in Go Park, jumps up really high, has a red ring, CP of 571, which is kind of crazy because I thought the CP always got like changed to zero. I'm not sure if it still does in this, but we don't really get to see, unfortunately. I love the sprites in this game as well. I love, I love how every single Pokemon actually has like a individual sprite that's been worked on. Like Nidoqueen looks really nice, Nido King looks really nice, Dodrio, Vileplume, Pikachu, Golduck. But yeah, that's pretty much all the gameplay for this video that I want to show you guys. So the main highlights, of course, are the, the move tutor that can teach you baddy bad. Um, we obviously have the nature person as well. Really awesome uh, for changing natures and stuff in the wild. We obviously have the IV checker where you can see if the IVs are good or not. Department store uh, with cosmetics, something like that. And then Erica's gym looking really good as well. But that is everything from me though, guys. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please do drop a like down below. Leave a comment as well, which was your favorite part of this gameplay. Are you happy? about the nature person you're happy about the iv person what are your thoughts on baddie bad um subscribe if you're brand new because i do daily pokemon content on this channel but thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing rest of your day and until next time guys peace